G'day, and welcome to the AOS Coach sneak peek into the Dawnbringers Book 1 Harbinger. Games Workshop did send me an early copy of this book before it hits the shelves, however, they're not going to see this video before it goes live. In this video, I will highlight the new Regiments of Renown with one in each of the Grand Alliances. There is also new War Scrolls to go with the new models for the Fire Slayers, Magakin of Nurgle, Flesh Eater Quartz, and Gloom Spike Gits. There is plenty of lore within this book with 38 pages dedicated to it. However, unlike the Broken Realms series which advanced the narrative, this first book for the Dawnbringers is more like four short stories about each of the Harbingers. I quite enjoyed all of the stories within the book, but don't expect to find the great next story arc for the Mortal Realms in Book 1. While this video does focus on the Regiments of Renown, these boxes are a great way to start one of the factions or even boost up your existing collection. If you would like to support the channel, consider purchasing your Dawnbringers book and your Regiments of Renown product from one of my affiliate partners at Warpfire Minis in the USA and Element Games in the UK. The link is in the video description. At the time of recording, I am not aware of if and when the new heroes will be available individually. So let's check out the latest additions through the Harbingers. Grimhold Exiles are the survivors of fallen magma holds, warriors who fight to honour their lost kin with each blazing hammer strike. The Grimhold Exiled is a new Fire Slayers hero with a movement of 4 inches, a save of 4 plus, bravery of 9 and 6 wounds. It does have one melee attack and no missile weapons. The Fire Rune Hammers has a range of 1 inch with 5 attacks, hits on a 3, wounds on a 3, Ren minus 2 for 2 damage. The Grimhold Exile has 3 key abilities you'll want to know about. Once per battle when you pick this unit to fight, instead of piling in and attacking with it, you can say that it will unleash the last of the Lodge Fire. If you do so, pick one enemy unit within one inch of this unit and roll a number of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of that enemy unit. For each 4 plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Honor of Grimnir once per battle in your hero phase, this unit can raise this battle cry. If it does so, friendly fire slayers units that do not have a mount and are wholly within 6 inches of this unit when it raises this battle cry are inspired until the end of the turn. Inspired units can run and still charge later in the turn. Finally, Living Legacy, when this unit is within 3 inches of another friendly unit that has 3 or more models, this unit has a ward of 4+. plus. The Grimhold Exile has Order, Fire Slayers, Dwarden, Hero, and Grimhold Exile keyword, and it will cost you 140 points. Fajori's Flame Bearers are the Fire Slayers inspired regiments of renown. It consists of one Grimhold Exile, one Auric Hearthguard unit with five models, one Hearthguard Berserker unit with five models, and one Volkite Berserker unit with ten models. I say inspired because if your army has an order general but is not a fire slayers army, you can include this regiment of renown. Sorry fire slayers, you can't take this regiment of renown, but you can absolutely take the Grimhold exile on its own. If you do so, no other allied units can be included in your army. You can include this regiment of renown in your army, even if the point value exceeds the amount of points you're allowed to normally take in an allied unit. Not only do you get the rules that are on these units war scrolls, but you do also get some special abilities as a regiment of renown. Fajori's Flame Bearers has two special rules, the first one being toe to toe, where enemy monsters within three inches of any units in this regiment of renown cannot contest objectives. The other one being Defiance of Grimnir, units in this regiment of renown cannot be picked when your opponent carries out a monstrous rampage. This Regiment of Renown is going to cost you 540 points. So which order armies would benefit from this Regiment of Renown? If your army is struggling to handle monsters, this might be the set of units for you. Your Grimhold Exile has that once per game attack where you'll do mortal wounds on a 4+, plus on the amount of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of that enemy unit. So in an extreme example, you would have 35 dice against a Mega Gargant, 
but most monster heroes are sitting around what 14 to 20 wounds monsters wouldn't be able to contest objectives while any of these units are within three inches and they ignore monstrous rampages your Hearthguard Berserkers would have a 4 plus ward while they're within 9 inches of a friendly Fire Slayers hero, while the Grimhold Exile will have a 4 plus ward while it's within 3 inches of these units. While this Regiment of Renown has some defensive debuffs when it comes to monsters, without those Fire Slayers runes you're not going to see the full offensive potential of these troops, and let's be honest, you stack up those Hearthguard Berserkers or Volkites, they're probably not going to pull down the monster individually. Yes, you'll debuff them a little bit and stop them from scoring and some cool things, but you're going to need some more offense to bring them down as well. The Harbinger of Decay trots into battle on top of vast steeds more dead than alive. These champions draw the gaze of Nurgle himself, and where they ride, the Plague God's sinister will will soon made manifest. The Harbinger of Decay is an updated model and war scroll to the Magakin of Nurgle. It has a move of 8 inches, a save of 3 plus, 8 bravery and 7 wounds. It has 3 melee profiles and no missile weapon profiles. The Plague Scythe has a range of 2 inches, 2 attacks, hits on 3s, wounds on 3s, ren 2 for 3 damage. The Grim Rot Sword has a range of 1 inch, Two attacks, hits on threes, wounds on threes, rend one for d3 damage. And finally, your demonic mount has the fly blown bite with a range of one inch, four attacks, hits on fours, wounds on fours, no rend for one damage. The Harbinger of Decay can either be armed with a plague scythe or carry a doom bell, and it also comes with a grim rot sword. It's had some changes on its war scroll with its abilities, and it has gained the priest keyword as well as a prayer. I'll get to that in a minute. Shadow Blight at the start of the combat phase or the battle shock phase, pick one enemy unit within three inches of this unit and roll a dice. On a three plus, that unit cannot issue or receive commands in that phase. If this unit carries a doom bell, once per battle in your hero phase, you can toll the doom bell. If it does so, enemy units within 14 inches of this unit, when it tolls the Doom Bell, are filled with despair until your next hero phase. The following effects apply to a unit filled with despair. Subtract one from the movement characteristic of that unit, subtract one from run rolls for that unit, and subtract one from charge rolls from that unit. I mentioned earlier that the Harbinger of Decay is a priest, and its prayer is the Omens of Decay. It's a prayer with an answer value of 3 and a range of 14. If answered, pick one enemy unit within range. Subtract the current battle round's number from the unit's bravery characteristic until your next hero phase. It has the keywords of Chaos, Maggotkin of Nurgle, Mortal, Nurgle, Hero, Priest, Harbinger of Decay. The unit will cost you 190 points and this war scroll has been updated from the current version in the Maggotkin of Nurgle. It gained the priest keyword and the prayer is new. Shutter Blight has changed. It's lost the Augur of Entropy ability, while it's gained the Doom Bell option and the rules that go with it. Falgoth Shutter Hood is the Nurgle-inspired Regiment of Renown. It includes one Harbinger of Decay, one Putrid Blight King's unit with five models, and one Puscoil Blight Lord's unit with two models. This Regiment of Renown is available to an army with the Chaos General, but is not a Magakin of Nurgle army. The two special rules that come with this Regiment of Renown, first being the Fog of Despair, which subtracts one from hit rolls for attacks made with missile weapons that target a unit from this Regiment of Renown. The other ability is coming from the Magakin of Nurgle Allegiance ability, and that is disgustingly resilient. Units in this Regiment of Renown have a ward of 5+. plus. In addition, at the start of your hero phase, you can heal one wound allocated to each unit in this Regiment of Renown. This package of troops is going to cost you 590 points. So which Chaos Armies would benefit from this Regiment of Renown? Well, the easy answer would be a Skaven Army that is filled with Clan Pestilence. But also, maybe your army needs some durability and is looking to gain access to a Priest. 
Tuskor Blight Lords have a movement of 8 inches and have 8 wounds each. So that's 16 wounds that can pin your opponent and absorb a lot of damage. Put them on a flank to score an early objective before swinging them into the thick of the battle. All of the units have a 5 plus ward and will heal one wound in your hero phase, which is going to make them good objective holders. The Harbinger can help you shut down those pesky invocations from the Fire Slayers, Corn, and the Daughters of Cain, as well as its War Scroll debuffing prayer. It is a lot of points in your army if you're playing a 2000 traditional match play battle, with one third of your army being allocated to this Regiment of Renown, before you even pick your battle line and your hero options. Marrow Scroll Heralds are senior delegates of the court sent to deliver entreaties to the leaders of other nations and enlist their aid in the name of the great cause. The Marrow Scroll Herald is a new Flesh Eater Quartz hero that doesn't currently exist in your battle tome. It has a movement of 6 inches, a save of 5 plus, bravery of 10 and 5 wounds. It only has one attack and that is a melee profile from the Bone Scythe with a range of 2 inches, 5 attacks, Hits on 3s, Wounds on 3s, Ren minus 1 for 2 damage. It has 2 unique abilities, the first being the King's Entreaty. At the end of the charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 3 inches of this unit and say that this unit will offer it an infected bone. If you do so, the opponent must choose whether that enemy unit will accept or refuse the bone. If it refuses, the Strike First effect applies to friendly Flesh Eater Quartz units within 3 inches of this unit until the end of the following combat phase. If it accepts the infected bone, that enemy unit becomes infected. Who saw that coming? For the rest of the battle, roll 2d6 before an infected unit issues or receives a command, attempts to cast a spell, or chant a prayer. Now make a roll before the action is carried out. If the roll is greater than that unit's bravery characteristic, that unit cannot perform that action in that phase. The other ability is Don't Shoot the Messenger. This unit is not visible to enemy units while it is wholly within 6 inches of 5 or more other friendly Flesh Eater Quartz models. It has the keywords Death, Flesh Eater Quartz, Mortant, Courtier, Hero, Marrow Scroll, Herald. This hero is going to cost you 115 points. Jaren's delegation is the Flesh Eater Court's inspired regiment of renown. It includes one Marrow Scroll Herald, one Crypt Ghoul unit with 20 models, one unit of Crypt Horrors with 3 models, and one unit of Crypt Flayers with 3 models. Now this regiment of renown, very similar to the last two, if your general is a death general but is not Flesh Eater Court's, you can take this regiment of renown. And again, you can go over your ally points... The special rules that Jaren's delegation brings to the party is Urgent Missive, where units in this Regiment of Renown can run and still charge later in the turn, as well as Deathless Courtiers, where units in this Regiment of Renown will have a ward of 6+. This total package is going to cost you 460 points. So which Death Armies are going to benefit from this Regiment of Renown? And honestly, I'm actually not sure. Soul Blight and Night Haunt are going to have access to cheap bodies, while your Night Haunt, your Soul Blight, and your Ossiarch are all going to have access to greater durability through regeneration. The King's Entreaty sounds like a lot of fun, but against high bravery opponents in all of Chaos and all of Death, it's really not going to trigger very often. Perhaps you value Run and Charge, I'm not really sure. Of the Regiments of Renown, this is definitely the cheapest one, but again, I'm not really sure what hole it's trying to plug. Maybe you let me know in the comment section. Maybe you can see something that I'm not. Bellowing wakey wakey at deafening volume, the rabble rousers have taken it upon themselves to rile up the subterranean hordes. So grating are their magically enhanced voices that they can stir up even the most stubborn titans from their slumber. The Rabble Rouser is a new Gloomspite Gits hero. It has a movement of 5 inches, a save of 4 plus, a bravery of 5, and 5 wounds. It has one attack profile, and that is the Moon Sickle and Basher melee attack. It's a range of 1 inch, 5 attacks, hits on a 3, wounds on a 3, minus 1 for d3 damage. 
It has a couple of abilities, the first one being the Mushroom Stuffed Bat Squig. Once per battle in your shooting phase, you can say that this unit will deploy its Bat Squig. If you do so, pick three different enemy units within 12 inches of this unit, and each of those units are going to suffer D3 Mortal Wounds. The Squig Skulled Armor means that this unit has a ward of 4+, plus, while it's more than 6 inches from all enemy units. The most interesting rule comes from Get Going Ya Gits. While any friendly units with this ability are on the battlefield, when you pick a friendly monster to move in the movement phase, you can say that it's goaded until the end of the turn. When a friendly monster is goaded, it can run and charge later in the turn. However, it must finish any kind of move except a pile-in move closer to a unit with this ability than it was at the start of the move. In addition, each time a goaded unit finishes a move, each friendly unit with this ability within 3 inches of that unit suffers D6 mortal wounds. Roll separately for each unit. It has the keywords Destruction, Gloomspike Gits, Grot, Moon Clan, Hero, Rabble Rouser, and will cost you 100 points. Now I love this model and I love this unit and its abilities, but it is going to require some deep thinking from us Git strategists because you can't just put this model in your backfield and then send your monsters forward and be free. You're going to have to teleport it around. You're going to have to use some movement shenanigans in order to take advantage of the goaded monster. Braggett's Bottle Snatchers is the new Gloom Spike Gits inspired regiment of renown. It includes a Rabble Rouser known as Braggett, it has one Gobba Palooza unit, it has a Squig Herd unit with 12 models, and a Squig Hopper unit with 10 models. Like the other regiments of renown, you can only take this outside of the faction. So if your general is a destruction general but is not a Gloom Spike Gits army, you can take this regiment of renown, and yes, it allows you to go over your ally points. The two special abilities being Major Irritant and Secret Tunnels. With Major Irritant, if a unit from this Regiment of Renown receives the Redeploy command, any other friendly unit from this Regiment of Renown within 6 inches of this unit can make an immediate move of D6. But they must finish that move more than 3 inches from all enemy units and cannot later shoot in that turn. The other rule is Secret Tunnels. Instead of setting up the units in this Regiment of Renown on the battlefield, you can place them to one side and say that they are navigating the secret tunnels. If you do so, at the start of your first hero phase, you can set up all of these units wholly within 6 inches of a battlefield edge and more than 9 inches from all enemy units. The units that you set up cannot move in the following movement phase, and this Regiment of Renown is going to cost you 500 points. So which destruction armies are going to benefit from this Regiment of Renown? Gloom Spike Gits has been strong in the tournament meta of late, and Squigs have really led the charge in that resurgence. So you might see this box as a silver bullet to your next 5-0 tournament run, but I want to call out a few things. If you look at those tournament lists, you will notice that while 12 Squig Herd is nice, you really want a reinforced unit of at least 24 and probably a Squig Boss to go with them to make it a real combat threat. You can't do either. You can't reinforce these and you can't add an extra Squig Boss because this is going to take up all your ally points. You're taking this Regiment of Renown because your army likely needs Mortal Wounds. With Squig Hoppers doing Mortal Wounds when they pass over units and they are quite fast, as well as your Squig Herds when they flee, they're going to do Mortal Wounds on the way out. The Squig Herd unit can't rally, but the Herders in the unit, so you get 10 Squigs, 2 Herders, they will bring back models in the Hero Phase unless you roll a 1. Secret Tunnels, I think, is your secret source to success here because use the Secret Tunnels to deploy the Rabble Rouser in enemy lines. Then you can use your faction monster like your Mega Boss or Maw Crusher to run and charge. This is only going to work if your Rabble Rouser is behind enemy lines because your Goaded Monster must finish closer to the Rabble Rouser. In a Gloom Spike Gits army, you can definitely use Hand of Gork to teleport the Rabble Rouser behind enemy lines to, again, make your monsters go faster. Plus, squigs are a lot of fun to paint. The world would be a better place if it had more squigs. 
The regiments of renown are an interesting concept, and while I love the intention and they remind me of the old dogs of war, I'm yet to see them become popular in competitive list building. Maybe it's a lack of flexibility within the regiments, or maybe that it's just that the benefits don't justify spending one quarter or more of your points on units that don't synergize with the rest of your army. If I had to rank the new regiments of renown based on their usefulness in the game, I would say Nurgle Box ranks highest, then Gits, then Fire Slayers, and finally Flesh Eater Courts. As I mentioned at the top of the video, these regiments of renown boxes can also kickstart your hobby collection with a new army or boost up an existing collection. They don't have to be used as a regiment of renown. I don't think any of these regiments of renown are auto include in a competitive list, but I do think the new heroes will bring some interesting tactics and play to your army. I'm already thinking about how I can use the rabble rouser in my gloom spike gits. If you are picking up any of these boxes or the book, consider supporting the channel by grabbing them from one of my affiliate partners in Warp Fire Minis in the USA and Element Games in the UK. My link is in the video description. But that's enough from me. I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section what you're thinking about these new heroes and the regiments of renown. Are they something that you'll be including in your force? And if you are, why? I hope you enjoyed that sneak preview in book one of the Dawnbringer series. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. Now, if you did, I would love it if you press like on the video, as well as left me a comment with your thoughts. The conversation will continue over on Discord and the link is down below in the episode description. I also want to give a massive shout out to the AOS Coach patrons and YouTube members who are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you are all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a double one on a spell cast.